What's up everyone? Matt Payne here. And today I saw yet another review from a prominent photographer about Topaz Sharpen AI. And I personally love using Topaz on certain photographs, but I often find that all of these advertisements that you see out there from all of these famous photographers are incredibly disingenuous because they're making money off of these advertisements. The way that works is that Topaz partners with photographers and they give them a certain amount of money to spend on ads and then they get to keep some of that money for themselves. So I thought I would do more of an honest look at how Topaz actually looks on your images. So I use Topaz a lot. I teach Topaz a lot on my workshops. And so I thought I would just run just one photo through Topaz to show you some of the pros and cons of what Topaz will do to your photographs. So let's dive in. All right, so for this image, I just picked a ran pretty random uh, elk picture I took in Yellowstone this winter. Nothing special, I just wanted to show kind of what a lot of people are using Topaz for is to fix some mistakes they've made in the field, overcome some high ISO issues, which is what I love it for, but also maybe to fix a slightly out of focus or blurry wildlife photograph. So I picked one that I knew would probably be problematic uh, because this elk was photographed early light in the morning, like. 6 a.m. in the winter, and so I had to use an ISO of 640. I probably should have even taken it up closer to like 1600 or 3200. But you can see my settings. I was at 500 millimeters, about f f 7.1 and uh, one one hundredth of a second. My shutter speed probably could have been much faster to freeze the motion of the elk moving. So you can see there's some issues with this elk. He's a little bit blurry in the face. But overall, it's, it's actually a pretty decent capture, right? You can see some, some noise in the sky here. Nothing too bad. But you can see that the, uh, the antlers back here are blurry and his face is blurry, mostly because he was moving a little bit. And so what I thought I would do is show you what Topaz would do to the image. So here I pulled it into Topaz Sharpen. And you can see at first glance, it looks really good, right? Like the elk looks fantastic, really awesome. But if you zoom in a little bit, you'll start to recognize some of the weaknesses of Topaz that you'll need to be very careful about when you edit your photographs. So for example, on these very detailed sections of hair, what'll happen is the, uh, the hair itself will get super, super, super weird artifacting going on. And you can see it just starts to look really weird. And this is a very common problem with Topaz. It just adds, you can see right here, it adds this weird pattern um, the hair looks super unrealistic and as far as the elk being out of focus in the face It didn't really fix that problem at all. It just made it look weird It did an okay job with these antlers. You can see it pulled in some artificial intelligence data to fill in the holes But again, you can see it also over sharpened and pixelated these horns Obviously you can pick different sharpened models. You can reduce some of the settings I just went with their kind of automatic settings here but I just wanted to give people a heads up. Topaz isn't everything that it's made out to be online. It's a great tool, but it should be used with great care. Hope that helps.